Let's say good morning to Ken Gutman. He is the superintendent of schools in Wald Lake. I still got a few buttons here to hit, Ken, but why don't you say hello while I get your picture perfect? Good morning. Welcome to the Megacast. Oh, good morning. Thank you so much for having me on the Megacast. That's yeah, good to have you. So uh, you went with a plain Zoom background. That's a good look for you today. I like that. I like that. Thank you. Ken fooled me a couple of last time he was on the air. He had this like Zoom background with a, a boardroom, and I could have sworn you were in a real boardroom. But then I'm like, say, hey, adjust the light. The windows are too bright, and then you you finally fessed up and said it was just a Zoom picture. I love these Zoom pictures that people are using. They're really cool. Yeah, it's been a, giving people a, a creative outlet in the midst of all kinds of other issues. So, Ken, uh, here's what's going on today in the education front. I uh, have a story here, if you don't mind me sharing, from Bridge, which is Michigan's nonpartisan, nonprofit news source. By the way, good place to get a lot of news and information. Um, and I've been using it a lot over the last couple of weeks. And if you've not gone to it, I'd check it out. Bridge. MI.com, bridgemi.com. 40 Michigan public and private colleges made a joint appeal to high school students and their families Wednesday, trying to calm nerves over how the coronavirus pandemic could impact college admissions. The letter, which includes names, phone numbers, and personal emails of admissions representatives from 25 private colleges and universities in the state's 15 public universities, is uh, is also a not so subtle acknowledgement of jitters among campus officials, among students everywhere. Ken Gutman and Wald Lake, you know about this letter and uh, people at the jitters right now. We're getting ready to send their students, uh, their kids, or students themselves going off to college. I do. I saw that uh, a couple hours ago, and uh, I think it's I think it's realistic. I think universities are nervous. And it, it, it's, um, it's realistic to be nervous right now. There are a couple of fronts uh, on which to be nervous or on which to be nervous. You have the financial implications and, and people's lives being in turmoil right now. Uh, and then you, of course, have the very real possibility of, a, of, a, of another wave of, of coronavirus and sending students into a, an environment like a college campus where students are not six feet apart very often. Uh, it gives people a reason to be worried. I don't think I was ever six feet apart when I was in college. We'd, we'd worked on just the opposite strategy, if I, I could be so bold. Uh, <laughs> so, no, it is. It's, you know, and, and then we heard that report. You probably heard it. I, I heard it on the news yesterday. They, I think they tried to spin it back around, but uh, reports that the coronavirus may actually rear its ugly head again in the fall and, and for goodness sakes, maybe even be worse, for goodness sakes. You know, we worry about that at the school level as well. So we, we uh, there's nothing to joke about here, but we say, kiddingly, this is our first pandemic, but we'll be more prepared for the next one. And should we come back to school in the fall and have to leave again, we'll be better uh, prepared to, to deal with that. So I hope it doesn't happen, obviously. And, and, and you know, science says the longer we're out, the safer we are. But I uh, know universities and schools and others are really worried about that. Maybe we need to uh, put on some seminars and programs to get some of the admission folks from our universities, uh, you know, in some kind of a, a, a virtual meeting of some kind or something and, and share that with the students to relieve some of the anxiety because it's probably going to be like uh, applying for that paycheck loan. You get in line and you wait forever. The universities, it's, it's really hard to talk to the, the admissions people at the universities, and you're especially going somewhere like Michigan State. Tyler, how many students were there at Michigan State when you were there? Oh, tens of thousands of them. Yeah, like forty or 50,000. Yeah. So, and you know, you're going to Michigan State or Michigan, one of the big schools. It may not be easy to get a hold of an admissions person. So, uh, Ken, and, and I assume the, the guidance counselors at your district and the other districts are, are going to be uh, working hard to talk to people and, and make them feel as comfortable as they can. They will, for sure. Uh, of course, there's so much that's unknown uh, that, uh, you know, in terms of the mental health aspect, I defer to Melanie Schwartz. But, but from, my, from our perspective, uh, we certainly would love to see our students go on to higher education in a safe environment. So, uh, Mr. Gutman, Ken Gutman, the superintendent of the Wald Lake Consolidated School District, federal government can, uh, quote unquote, print money. They can operate in a deficit. They can just, you know, and thank goodness, because that's helping us all out right now. But, but the state of Michigan, our municipalities and school districts, 
they don't have the same luxury. You have to balance your budget. You can borrow, but you have to balance your budget. Um, we're, are you concerned about finances at your school district? I mean, the state <laughs> state number. I, you know, the state's going to cut dollars to schools. It's a four. I mean, we don't. It, it's got to be a foregone conclusion, don't you think? Yeah, so I, I think it's a foregone conclusion. There's no choice. But you go back a couple of months, and we saw our governor put out a budget that was one of the best budgets we've seen, at least her proposal in the last ten years. And fast forward to now, where. Uh, they're talking about record cuts, uh, cuts the likes of the 2008, 9, 10s, 11. There was a time when we were cut $470 per student. We have 14,000 students. That adds up fast. So uh, we do anticipate some reductions without some help from the federal government. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. We now know more about what to do for our children than we ever have, and we'll have fewer resources. In fact, I'm heading into a budget meeting this afternoon and uh, the, the numbers don't look good uh, at this point. You know, that's part of why um, at, at, that's part of why this debate that we're going to have as to how much we shut down, what we open up. You know, there is a side to that. It, we got to deal with the health issues, but we you got to look at the economic health of our communities too. I do not envy the governor, the Republicans in the the legislature and anyone else who's involved in trying to sort this thing out it is a complicated bundle and uh, hopefully they'll get through it all okay but it, it's going to be a tough tough situation and and uh, we know numbers are coming down when do you think i mean the other thing has got to be uncertainty for you and the other districts uh superintendent gutman do you have any idea when i mean i can't imagine they even know in lansing but do you have any idea when you're going to know what your future dollars from the state are going to look like there's a uh, May 15th is the uh, consensus revenue estimating conference, and we'll have a better sense then of what state budgets look like. But certainly, it still has to go through the legislative process. We still would need to have a you know a governor's revised proposal, I assume, a Senate proposal, a House proposal, and then some sort of uh, I don't know compromise or, or they can work it out. And, and the numbers don't look good early on. We'll have a better sense of what the numbers are on May 15th. But then again. Uh, you never know what happens when we go through a legislative session. I got a really, really bad feeling that that is going to be a really big font on the front page of the news and the free press when they announce what those budget numbers are, because it isn't, it isn't going to be pretty. No, it's really not. It is not. All right. Well, uh, good luck. We will get through all this. Somehow we'll get through it together. Uh, we were talking to uh, your friend and ours, uh, the uh, superintendent of the Bloomfield Hill Schools the other day, Pat Watson. And uh, he said they're trying to figure out what to do to make graduation special for students this year. Are you having those conversations as well? We are. Our ideal, we're talking to Eastern Michigan University where we hold all three of our high school graduations on the same day. It was scheduled to be May 31st this year. We're hoping to get a date in July. Now, that's, of course, predicated on the fact that we'll be allowed to have a graduation ceremony in July. Should that not happen, uh, we're pursuing all kinds of ideas. You know, the drive through idea, virtual idea. Uh, the, the reality is nothing can match the pomp and circumstance of, a, of an in-person ceremony, the feeling you get, the music, the, the well, some of the speeches. And so uh, we're hoping to be able to do that in July. If it doesn't happen, we're open to ideas and I would encourage all parents to, to send me their thoughts and all students to send me their thoughts. We want to make this as special as we can in light of our circumstances. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. I mean, do, if it's a drive, <laughs> I'm just sorry I'm laughing, and I apologize. <laughs> drive through graduation. So you got to have like that convertible Mustang so you can take your hat and throw it up, right? I, I mean, oh my goodness. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, something will be, will fig, will be figured out. Someone's going to come up with some really good ideas. I, do you mind if I work on a few for you? Who knows? You know what? We'll we'll take your ideas to heart, and we'll see if we can make one happen. All right. It, it, let's see, Tyler. We gotta we gotta get to work. Um, start working. Open up a file. Call it the the mega commencement. All right, and we'll see what okay. we'll see <laughs> we'll see what we can come up with. Ken Gutman, anything else uh, you want to add today? Any other thoughts? Just just a quick thought on an unrelated subject, if you don't mind, Dave. That uh, we're doing something again very different this year. We, we were supposed to have our kindergarten orientation coming up where we tell all of our parents how wonderful our district is and how our elementary schools are. But instead on Monday, we're doing a uh, virtual kindergarten orientation with a video featuring our featuring our, our principals and our teachers and our directors and food service. And uh, we'll, we'll have a, a Google form with parents to ask questions and then it, a Zoom meeting with principals of the elementary schools for parents to follow up and ask their questions there. 
We can't get people into our schools, but we can certainly share how great they are. All right. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Thank goodness for uh, all of our Internet virtual technologies that everyone's putting to work. And best of luck with, with all of that and everything. you got you got a budget crisis coming. You've got... Uh, you know, just to figure out how to close out the year. You've got your commencement. Um, I'm sure uh, you got you got your hands full there, Ken. You and the other superintendents will get through. I appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you again for sharing your Facebook audience with us. Uh, Wald Lake continues to do the biggest numbers on this show. Um, your community, your virtual community is behind you. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here with you. And, of course, as always, the Wald Lake Schools community shows up. Absolutely. Thank you very much. He Thank is the you. superintendent of schools in Wald Lake, Kenneth Gutman, and we appreciate him being here on the Megacast.